Hey there, welcome to the Chronicle pregame show. I'm Ryan Herr, alongside Samir Pandari. We're going to get set up for Duke in Miami. They're going to kick it off at Saturday night at 7 p.m. on Halloween. Uh, under the lights at Walls Wade Stadium, it's Duke's first home game as a ranked team this year, now number 22 in the latest AP poll, uh, their first home game since October 3rd against Boston College. Now, to quickly recap last week's game, it was a doozy up in Blacksburg. Duke outlasted Virginia Tech in four overtimes, 45-43, uh, longest game in ACC history. You just tell me, what are your takeaways, biggest takeaways from that game at, against the Hokies? Yeah, the victory against the Hokies was definitely a huge one. It was the kind of game the Blue Devils have really struggled in the past to put away, and I think one of the the key takeaway from the game was really seeing Thomas Sir throw the ball down the field. Uh, he struggled in the opening of the game for sure. He, he missed a couple of wide open receivers, but towards the end of the contest, hit Max McCaffrey a couple of times, who also had one of his biggest games of the season. It's a positive sign for the team. But really, Sirk's ability to push the ball down the field, something we haven't seen all season. And it was it was a surprising development just because the defense, for once, was actually, it bent and it broke a couple of times. It gave up three touchdowns to Bucky Hodges. And it, it really, it didn't have a, it didn't have as easy of a go as it has had for the majority of the year, but definitely Sirk stepped up. And really, the team just fought and survived. I mean, four overtimes, longest game, just a grind-out battle. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with that win, Duke became bowl eligible for the fourth straight season. And now, really, they've got that monkey off their back, and they can take a look uh, towards the, the top of the coastal standings, uh, where they're undefeated in ACC play. Uh, UNC and Pittsburgh, they played Thursday night. So now there's only two unbeaten teams on the coastal side in, in ACC play. So... Uh, Saturday's game against Miami is going to have really big implications for the Blue Devils' hopes at getting back to Charlotte in the ACC title game. So, Samir, it's been a, a, a rough week for the Hurricanes, to say the least. Uh, last weekend, they were embarrassed at home against Miami, uh, excuse me, against Clemson. Now, number three in the country, 58 to nothing was the final. Uh, and that ended up being the last game uh, for Miami head coach uh, Al Golden, who, who was relieved of his duties uh, on Monday. So, Samir, they've got a new head coach in place for, for the interim being. Uh, but they also have a bunch of, of injury concerns and, and some off-the-field issues as well. Yeah, the, the firing of uh, head coach Al Golden after that performance, um, really just an embarrassment of a loss against Clemson. They really never had a shot in that game. But new head coach Larry Scott, former tight ends coach of the team, actually has stepped in. And uh, the team's looking to get turned around around him. And really, it'll be tough because in the loss against Clemson, they actually lost Brad Kaya to concussion in the middle of the game. Uh, Rayshon Scott is also another unknown in terms of his health for the contest on Saturday. And uh, off the field, certainly not been easy for the team either. Uh, one of their best players, Artie Burns, a quarterback, lost his mother this week. And uh, a lot of the teams uh, expressed their support for him. And it's another tough, tough blow for the Hurricanes. They've definitely not had things easily in the last couple of years. And definitely in the last couple of weeks, it's been, it's been a tough ride for the Hurricanes. Right, so Miami's going to make the, make the trip to Durham, not really knowing uh, whether Brad Kaya, starting quarterback for all season ACC Freshman of the Year last year, whether he's going to be able to go or not. Head coach David Cutcliffe for the Blue Devils has said that he's expecting Kaya to be out there, but we just don't know. We've got to clear the concussion protocol uh, and, and see what happens uh, with regard to that. Miami's got some weapons, though. If Kaya is able to go, plenty, plenty of people for him to find. Stacey Coley, Herb Waters on the edge. Uh, Joseph Yerby at running back, stepping in for Duke Johnson, is now playing on Sundays for the Cleveland Browns. So Miami always recruits well, always a dangerous team as a historic program like they are. And then we're playing with a big chip on their shoulder. Uh, both uh, under interim head coach Larry Scott and, and for Artie Burns and, and what he's been going through with, with the loss of his mother. So it should be an entertaining game, 7 p.m. You can come out and, and watch the Blue Devils take on the Hurricanes in Durham, or you can watch on TV and then go trick-or-treating uh, after that. So for Samir Pandari, uh, I'm Ryan Herter. We'll see you guys later.